everybody, this is Laura coming to you today from End Time Apostasy. I hope you guys are doing well. <clears throat> now today I want to look at this idea of a Jezebel spirit. Is there a Jezebel spirit? And if so, what is it? Now what I'm going to do is, I'm first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a video of what the Jezebel spirit is taught to be. And then I'm going to continue on with the commentary. So that's what they teach the Jezebel spirit is, okay? Now, is it biblical? What I'm going to be doing, guys, I'm going to bring you over to this very precious sister called Jill Martin Rishi. Okay, and Jill Martin Rishi was the daughter of Walter Martin. And Walter Martin wrote The Kingdom of the Cults um, in the olden times. And now this sister has written The Kingdom of the Occult, Walter Martin, with Jill Martin Rishi and Kurt Van Gordon. Okay, so she's an expert on this subject. Now before I play this video um, with our sister explaining, according to the scripture, what, the Jeze what Jezebel really is. Um, I'm going to show you some people that teach this. Okay, so Ryan of Strange teaches this. Okay, we have um, <laughs> the Sneaky Squid Spirit Woman, uh, uh, Jennifer Leclerc. Okay, she teaches the Jezebel Spirit. Okay, so we have this fellow, Robert Morris. I've done a video on him. He's a Word of Faith mogul and he's a false teacher. And we have over here John Paul Jackson. Now, John Paul Jackson has gone on. He's not with us anymore, but he taught um, the Jezebel spirit. Now, what I want to show you here is there is so much lies. There's books, the Jezebel spirit, the Jezebel spirit, look, escaping the destruction of the Jezebel spirit, Jezebelian. It's all over the place. Now, we are supposed to test everything in light of scripture, brethren. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to let this precious sister explain about Jezebel and if it is a spirit or not. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here now and I'm going to say, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you and may the Lord let his light to shine upon you. And I pray that Sister um, Jill will minister to your soul. Have a wonderful night. Bye for now. Bye-bye. So is there a Jezebel spirit that can really possess people or influence their lives or influence the government or influence a 
territory, a piece of land, or a location. So who was Jezebel? Well, Jezebel was an actual historical woman. She was the wife of King Ahab of Israel, not of Judah, of Israel, because remember at the time of about 830 BC, uh, when Jezebel reigned with Ahab, the kingdom of Israel had been divided. So you had the kingdom of Israel to the north, and you had the kingdom of Judah to the south. So it had been divided into two kingdoms. So Jezebel was real, and we find out quite a bit about her from the biblical record. And that's what I would really like to stick to here. And you can see here, I had to show you this. This is a picture of Jezebel's seal from biblicalarchaeology.org. So very fascinating little peek into the historical side of Jezebel. So just how bad was Jezebel? Well, she was pretty bad. What kinds of things did she cause to happen? What was she responsible for? Well, let's see. She was responsible for uh, murder, terrible murder. She broke the laws of God in many ways. She incited her husband to break the laws of God in many ways. As you can see here, Jezebel led her husband astray. She encouraged corrupt worship to false gods. And these false gods, they were bad. We're talking Baal here. We're talking child sacrifice in the most brutal ways and unbelievable sexual immorality. That's what Jezebel did. She incited ungodly behavior, of course, unbecoming a king, King Ahab. Not that he was the best of people anyway, or the best king anyway, and she practiced deceit, treachery, superiority in order to fulfill a covetous and controlling nature. She was so bad that the biblical record shows that not one good thing came from what Jezebel did. Now by that I mean, let's take for example Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife was pretty bad. She accused Joseph of rape and had him thrown into prison, which was almost certainly a death sentence. So at the very best scenario, in the very best scenario, Joseph would have sat there and rotted for who knows how many years because he was just a simple Israeli or Jewish slave. So what she did, Potiphar's wife, was pretty bad. But even out of that terrible thing, God brought something good, which of course, as we all know, was Joseph becoming Pharaoh and saving Israel, God saving Israel through him. But when it came to Jezebel, there is not one good thing that God chose to bring from her. That's pretty significant. Now, very important here. We said what she was, very focused on sexual immorality with Baal and Ashtoreth, the goddess Ashtoreth. And we, we talked about that a little bit, but one thing you have to realize here is the contrast, which is, what was Jezebel not? Jezebel was a historical person. She was an evil woman. What was she not? She was not a demon, okay? So, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, Jezebel is a historical woman. That's who Jesus is talking about in Revelations 2.20. Revelation 2.20. He is talking about a real, physical, historical woman who was doing what? She was causing the church to fall into sexual sin. And if you look carefully at that verse, sexuality is referred to twice. So Jesus is very firm about referring to her as someone who is living and as someone who he someone who he is very disgusted with and someone who he will punish. He ends by saying, and I will kill her children. So if anything from that verse, we should take into account the seriousness of sexual sins. So here she is, Jezebel, in Revelation. Now, yes, she's a historical woman, but because this is prophecy, we have the fact that it will stretch down through the ages. So down through the ages, yes, you see sins like Jezebel's. Sins like Jezebel's. And that's the main point I want to focus on. What we're looking at here is error in identity. There is nowhere in the Bible where a demon is named Jezebel. There just isn't. Jesus mentions a woman in Revelation, 
And yes, we can see those same sins repeated down through history by humanity, but there is nowhere where he names her demonic. Now this whole error developed in a big way in the 1950s in America, and it was because of a man named William Brannan. He started out as an evangelical preacher, you know, the old tent meetings, uh, and then he went down a very bad road. And he actually was consorting with a demon. Now, I mean consorting, I mean he said that a demon stood over his shoulder and spoke to him during his meetings. That's what I mean by consorting, taking information from something demonic. And out of William Branham's ministry came Pentecostal oneness, which is a cult that denies the Trinity. Now you can see here on this little video that I pulled from YouTube that William Brannan uh, actually did a sermon on Jezebel and it was quite extensive. And from that time, the name Jezebel and the whole scenario, scenario of her being able to possess or influence the church really, really grew and today has become widespread. So even though Jesus is referring to a woman historically and to her sins, William Brannan took that and took the character of Jezebel and the sins of Jezebel from the Old Testament and made from it false doctrine. So. I can't tell you, I feel very strongly about this, I can't tell you how it felt to sit in a counseling session at a church and hear the pastor praying to cast out the demon of Jezebel from this poor woman who had come in there to get help in her life. Christians cannot be possessed, and we've gone through that many times I know, and I'm sure you know on Understanding the Times, and to lay that burden on someone, or to lay that burden on a daughter, that your daughter is demon possessed because she is rebellious or possessed by the spirit of Jezebel. I'm sorry, but that is just not biblical. Please send me the verses that say Jezebel is a demon, an actual spirit that can possess or influence us. I say, and I really believe this is true based on what Jesus said in Revelations, I say that Jesus is referring to the sins that we all commit. And by all, I mean every church down through the centuries, because that is what he is talking about in Revelation. So, this is the error, that a specific spirit named Jezebel is alive and manifesting itself today, and that she can possess Christians or possess territories, like the New Apostolic Reformation teaches, N-A-R. They teach the spirit of Jezebel. They teach that she can possess territories and people, but there is no biblical basis for it. Sin is alive. Sin is evil. Satan is alive. Satan attacks us in many different ways, but the New Apostolic Reformation and those who still follow William Brannan's teaching, Oneness Pentecostalism, are saying that this spirit of Jezebel is something else that it is a real influential spirit and that it attacks us, Christians and non-Christians. This biblically is error. So remember this, if you are going to argue for a special demonic spirit of Jezebel, then you need to provide the biblical verses and the foundation that support it. So one more thing, some of you brought up the spirit of Elijah and you compare the spirit of Elijah to the spirit of Jezebel. And these, this comparison is taken totally out of context. When the Bible refers to the spirit of Elijah, it is referring back to the prophecies of the Messiah. So this is a messianic verse or reference, and it has nothing to do with an outside spirit or anything like that. Now, can God give an extra measure of his power to people? Absolutely. But what I am saying is you cannot compare Jezebel to the messianic prophecy of the Elijah spirit. It just does not work from a hermeneutical standpoint. And of course, hermeneutics is a special way that we look at the Bible. We study the Bible 
through hermeneutic points and it helps us to understand it. So hermeneutically you cannot compare these two. Historically you cannot compare these two. It doesn't work. Right? Uh, let me give you one more example. How about Judas? Why isn't there a spirit of Judas? Judas was far worse than Jezebel. Why don't we have the Judas spirit today? Think about that one.